We're going to start with District 1 in York. Um, Scott Childers. I don't have any opposition. I'm really here. I wanted to meet a lot of the candidates and just kind of go um, through what we're doing you know, in our county. Uh, I am a director of SESBA, which is the State School uh, Board Association. So if any of you become uh, members of boards and not currently, I, you know, I will be one of your representatives. But also I just want to talk about a little overall. Um, I do want to express kind of what Brandon said. We're really in a point where people aren't getting the whole point of public education and where we are. There's a lot of things going on now that really everybody in this room needs to focus on what's important. And I think we've lost what's important in our schools. I think we've lost what's important in our districts. So as a whole, we all need to come together. Brandon made a good statement um, that, you know, we may disagree. We might disagree. If you're not in this room for public education, you're in here for the wrong reason. So I just want everybody to know where I'm coming from personally. This is not us as a board. This is my personal opinion. I appreciate everyone that's here. Um, and I do look forward to working with, with many of you that do win this election. And uh, good luck to everyone. Thank you. Yeah. And now we have um, Chris Revels. I do have opposition this year. Uh, I've served on your school district one board of trustees for 20 years now. Um, been through a lot of issues from growth uh, early on when we built the high school, passing those bond referendums, and now where are we again? We're back at growth and looking at trying to pass another bond referendum. Uh, these things are very important. We have to have safe learning environments for our students. If, if, if students don't feel safe, and more importantly, if their parents don't feel safe, if their students are safe, you know, we're not doing something right. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on in society today uh, with uh, school safety, and we, we preach that. And we, we try to walk the walk and talk the talk in the school district one when it comes to school district safety. Um, bond referendum is very important to us. With all the growth that's going on in York County, uh, not only the county, but in the city limits of York, uh, we have to meet that demand. And um, the only way we can do it is by passing bond referendum. I think I bring that experience from, with my 20 years on the board, uh, to provide good, solid guidance to, to some of the newer board members. And uh, just appreciate uh, the fact that we have parents and community members that care enough to help us with the bond referendums and other issues that we deal with within our school district. Um, that's about it. Thank you. We are going to move on to District 2 now, Clover Schools, and we're just going to go in alphabetical order. Natalie Bergio. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Natalie Bergio, and I'm running for Clover School District seat 4. As you can hear, I'm not from here. I'm originally from Soviet Union, mm -hmm. where as every child, I went to public school where I was educated as well as indoctrinated. I was told that socialism is the only way of living and that we should hate Americans. It took me many years to recognize and more importantly to overcome what I was indoctrinated in the schools. We have chosen Clover for its conservative values, for an amazing people, and for great schools. I'm not originally from Clover, but that gives me a unique perspective to understand what phenomenal things Clover has to offer, as well as opportunity for improvement. I'm running for school board to make sure that children's interests are taken care of first. Based on South Carolina Department of Education, in Clover School District, 31% of eighth graders are reading below math level. 51% of 8th graders are below in mass. Those are astonishing numbers. Perhaps we need to go back to basics and start teaching math, language, writing, and leave social agendas and politics to families to take care of. We did pass the bond, and we are building the new schools, and that increased our taxes. It will be helpful to have somebody on the board who is frugal with finances. I manage $100 million in products for living, and I deliver them on budget. We have great educators 
and administrators in the school district. And they represented well in the school board. What we need is a parental representation. Somebody who will represent and will be voice for children and for families. I am running for school board to make sure that New York, California, or Soviet Union is not happening in Clover. So if you share my values, please vote for me. And thank you for your time. Next we have Jessica Cody. I'm Jessica Cody. I'm wearing my big girl shoes, so I hope you guys can see me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I am running for the Bethany seat in the Clover School District. I am unopposed this year, but I still want to get out and campaign and um, meet constituents, answer any questions that anyone would ever have for me. Um, I also like to share what our district is doing. Um, as you probably know, we're all here in the same county. Um, Clover is always one of the top schools in the state. Um, we're number two. We have. Uh, two years ago, we had the highest graduation rate in South Carolina for a traditional high school. Um, we have over 400 completers in programs this past year, which is amazing. Um, it, and all of this has been done while we are growing beyond control. So um, as Natalie mentioned, we had a bond pass. I was elected in 2020. I worked through COVID to get kids in seats as fast as we could. At safely but as quickly as possible um, in the area that I live in in the county and in my school district especially um, I know personally how important it is for those kids to be in school this is um, sometimes school is not just for sitting in class but it's for support it's for food it's for people watching them we all know how important that is so um, I take I, I have a special perspective on our district because of where I'm located um, so if you don't know where Bethany is, I'm the farthest out in the country. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm wrapping up, so if you guys have any questions for me, I would still appreciate any, any of your votes in Clover, and I'm always here to answer. My name is Kendra Cook. I am running for the seat four in Clover School District. <coughs> uh, my experience in the school district is that I have 36 years of education experience. I started out as a student, went, came to Clover when I was nine. My family came here and kind of they, they, they kind of told us you'll go back in five years you're not going to stay here all this time but my dad was in textiles and we stayed so i went through our clover school system i went through conard i went through clover middle which was a roosevelt school mm -hmm. went on to clover high school and then after leaving winthrop university uh getting my degree in physical education came back to clover as a teacher and so from a teacher i was a teacher a coach i went then went to an assistant principal role and then a principal role so i am very invested in the district uh, this district has done so many things for me and my family our two kids graduated from clover i now have grandchildren that are in our school systems so what goes on in clover is very very important to me my role as being on the school board is that I maintain what Clover has done. We have so many great things going on. There are 19 career paths at our high school that our students can go to. Some of you, if you are without power, you may have had some of our graduates come and take care of your power and, and uh, repair some of those lines because we have a, a, a partnership with York Electric and we serve our students or they have an opportunity to go in and be linemen. We have our FFA starting in our middle school. So there's a lot of things that we have going on that I'm very proud of. And like I said, Clover has been very good to me and I want to give back to that district that um, carried me and my family uh, in the past. So thank you. We have Kevin Johnson. So my name is Kevin Johnson. I'm running for Clover School District at Water Thorn Seeds. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a Christian. I am a husband. I am a father of five. As of yesterday, I'm a four-year-old common man. I'm just, I'm just a guy, okay? And about six years ago, my family fled socialism in California. We came specifically to the Clover area for the great schools. Like, that's just the truth. Um, unfortunately, during that time, we 
seen some things that remind us too much of California. Some of the same socialist ideologies are being injected into the schools, and that's concerning. Uh, some of those things, SEL, DEI, uh, pro profane pornographic material in the libraries and otherwise, a whole bunch of apps that have been not reviewed by anybody, stuff full of, of objectionable material which has been recognized. I better hurry up. So um, our, our school board, in my opinion, has not taken appropriate action to safeguard our children from these ideologies. They haven't respected parental values. So I'm, I'm running purely for that motivation. Clover School District is great in, in so many ways. But we got to step up to the plate to make sure that we're preserving the sanctity of our children, that we're focused on critical thinking and knowledge, and that our, our future generation has the best path forward. Thank you so much. Last but not least, Tracy Stiff. I am Tracy Stiff, and I am the incumbent for seat uh, at large in Clover School District. Um, this is the ending of my first term when I'm a third year, I guess third generation uh, Clover School District graduate. And my children, both of my children, two boys, went to Clover School District. One graduated in 2013 and one graduated in 2020 during COVID. Um, during my youngest son's senior year, he got into the middle college program at Clover High School. And um, when he ended up graduating, he got a full ride to PC. And I thought that I owed a lot of that to Clover School District. I didn't really know much about the, the CTE program. Uh, I wish I would have known more with my oldest son because I think that would have been a great hands-on thing for him. But during that year that he was in the middle college program, I was asked to serve on a board to get grants for York School District and Clover School District for their career technology centers. And during that year, I spent a lot of time getting to know what we had to offer that I really didn't know before. Even being from Clover, going through the Clover School District, having a son already gone through the Clover School District, I didn't realize what a wonderful hidden gem that we had. And that was one of my reasons, reasonings for wanting to run the first time. Um, I've learned a lot over the last four years. I feel that I've, I've had my blinders taken off a little bit. Um, I have seen some of the wonderful things that Clover has done. There's always room for improvement. Uh, some of the things that Mr. Johnson mentioned are things that he contacted me. I was the, you know, he was a constituent of mine and I've listened to him and I've also listened to Ms. Bergio um, over the last three and a half years and tried to work with them and work together. And, and that's what it boils down to. As a community, we have to work together. We all want the best for our schools. And um, I think that I can do that for the next four years. Then we are on to District 3, Rock Hill. Um, and the first person is Montreal Belton. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Montreal Belton, and I'm running for Rock Hill School Board. Um, seat number one, Rock Hill 3. So I came to York County actually back in 1992 when I got out of the military. Actually, I did my last tour in the military as, as a reservist. Came to Rock Hill as a student at Winthrop, graduated, met my wife. She was from Rock Hill and we decided to make Rock Hill and York County our home with part of it being in Fort Mill and some of it being in Rock Hill. I started my career here actually as a teacher. I'm one of these weird guys um, who has a PhD in education and a law degree. So my first 15 years of my career was spent as a public educator inside of classrooms. I spent five years as a teacher at Rawlinson Road Middle School, went on to be an assistant principal, and then became a principal for seven years and finished out my active time as, an, as a practitioner at the Department of Education as the first director of school transformation when Dr. Zays was elected. I left there and now I practice law. My law office is here in Rock Hill and, and a lot, large portion of my practice is education law where I represent students, parents, and educators with any issues across the state dealing with school districts. Now, why am I running for school board? Well, I've spent 30 years as an educator and I still consider myself an educator and certainly in my career. My wife is a career educator. She started in 1996 in Rock Hill Schools and still works in Rock Hill Schools. Uh, we have two children. My oldest child is at the University of, uh, University of South Carolina. He went through the Fort, he went 
part of the time in the Rock Hill School District and went the other part in Fort Mill. And then my daughter here has gone K-12. She's in the 11th grade now at Rock Hill High School. She's gone her complete life. She's lived and gone to, not lived, but gone to school here in Rock Hill. I am running because I understand some of the critical issues that are facing our school district, particularly issues around discipline and how do we maneuver that, the competitiveness that I feel like Rock Hill Schools has lost, and there are some other issues. Check me out, vote for Montreal Belton, and all of you who can vote in District 1, I hope you'll consider my, my candidacy. Thank you. James Burns? How you doing? I'm uh, James Burns. I run for C3 for Rock Hill Schools. Um, uh, some of the other board members of the room, I asked y'all, what is your budget? currently right now and I added it up you know we're getting close to 800 million dollars for your county that's a huge number Fort Blank will be at a billion to educate kids in the public sector for a billion dollars I think we can we can find the best teachers and the best give the best cultural environment for our students as well as, as families as well so that's a huge number you know, for us to sit here and, and believe that the starting teacher pay, I think, in the average right now for York County is only 50000 Why is that? With almost a billion dollars of operate prop, I'm sorry, um, operate revenue. We've got to really start looking at where the money is going. My biggest thing, I, I, I've only been on the Rock Hill School for one term. And the money keeps getting put into programs and made up positions at the district level and administration. I'm going to really focus on with the current school board. But if I if I stay on the school board, of course, taking that money and put it back into the classrooms, put it back into the schools. That is the number one place it needs to be with our children, not some made-up program that doesn't work. We've got programs, and I'm sure you have programs in Fort Mill, York, and Clover that have been around for 20 years. You don't even use them anymore. So we should go ahead and cut them and put the money back into the classroom. I have four kids in the Rock Hill school system. Uh, so far in the past three weeks, I've walked about 100 miles talking to people on the south side of Rock Hill. The same thing. I've gone through uh, middle class neighborhoods. Students don't even use our school system down anymore because of safety and security, like Mr. Belton just said. For a billion dollars, we should be able to provide safety and security. Am I wrong? Exactly. So I think there has to be a lot more emphasis put into where the money's going and how it's being spent. And it's, it's, it's our job as a school board and as a, as a community to lift up our public school system. I'm a huge fan of it. I came up through the public school system, Edmundport, Rawlson Road. Actually, Mr. Belton, you were my teacher. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you remember that or not. And then Northwestern. Time. Oh, sorry. Anyway, <laughs> thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Corey Kerlock, but you can't say that five times. Blame him for that. It's Kerlock. Like, I care about you, so lock your door. <laughs> I, uh, you won't forget it. I am running for seat five with Rock Hill School District, so my specific area, uh, well, my schools are Independence, Leslie, Middle School is Castle Heights, and High School is Rock Hill High. I am running for school board um, because, for one, Two of my reasons are right here. <laughs> the other one is, yeah, that's, my youngest one's like, no. <laughs> but my oldest is actually swimming for South Point, so he's at swim practice right now. But that's the reason why I am specifically interested in running for Rock Hill School Board is because I have a vested interest. I have kids that are in this school system. They're third, sixth, and my oldest is eighth grade. So I will be here for quite a while with the Rock Hill Schools. And I'm, my passion is really to make sure that we're doing the best thing for our students. So my platform is Care Lot Cares. And the C is really cultivating excellence in our schools, no matter what, what that looks like. To actually, all three of my children have participated in the school of choice. And it has worked amazing for them. It really did help bridge that gap because their particular learning style worked best in the Montessori, the inquiry, and the STEAM. Um, however, where we are zoned, that is not an option. So because of school of choice, they were able to get the best education and what works best for them. So that's what I am advocating for equity across all of our schools. As well as communicating with parents, I am a working mom and sometimes Parent-teacher meetings at 11.30 are not conducive. So it's, as a working parent, what works best? How are we gonna meet our parents where we are so we can get them engaged um, as well? And then of course, safety and our, our teachers. Really having that respect and the communication with our teachers. 
because it's not super helpful. Oh, okay. Corey Carolot, Carolot Cares, thank you. I am Wendy Cole, and I have had the honor of serving Rock Hill School District 5 for the past eight years. I'm mom or wife to a retired Rock Hill Police Lieutenant Doug Cole and mom to Courtney, Joshua, and Cameron Tuck, who are all Rock Hill High School graduates. I have been consistently um, volunteering in the Rock Hill Schools, involved in Rock Hill Schools for over 28 years. Um, I was the room mom, the school improvement council president, PTA, whatever needed to be done, and I'm still doing that. Um, I volunteer on so many different boards and um, all of our nonprofit community partners. I'm out there supporting them, making those connections. I like everybody else who ever, uh, thought about running for school board. I, I am going to get on that school board and I am going to get it fixed. I'm going to fix that <laughs> district. And I like every sitting board member soon came to realize it is a very slow process. Um, unfortunately, with all of the different regulations and um, funding sources and things, it takes you a couple of years just to figure out what's, what's going on. Um, but it's been, you know, next to being a mom, one of the most challenging and rewarding jobs I've ever done. And it takes a lot of time. And I even took a step back. I worked for the Culture and Heritage Museums. Not only took an hours cut, but a very large pay cut so that I could have the time to serve our schools. I'm in there working for our kids and I hope you will support me. Thank you. Hello, I'm Lacey Daniel. I have some notes just to make sure I get what I need to. Um, but I am running for an at-large unexpired term in Rock Hill School District. My name will be on every ballot of those in the Rock Hill Appendix Zone. Um, as a public school educator for 20 years, I've stood in the classroom. I've seen the challenges, the triumphs, and most importantly, the potential of our students here in the district. As a mother of a twice exceptional student and a neurotypical student, I've seen how our district works well for some while not working well for others. The reason I'm running for the school board is I have three priorities. Student success is at the heart of what I do and what I believe in. Um, I believe that all students deserve to be seen, supported, and successful. And um, I want to ensure that schools provide adequate resources for all students, whether it's giving them advanced opportunities or additional resources and support that they need. Um, as a school board member, I will advocate for practices and policies that ensure at least a year's growth for every student in the 180 days that they sit in our school building. Next is school safety. As a mother and a teacher, I know the weight of worrying about whether our students are safe when they're at school. This hit home for me in January. Oh, I'm going to get through this one. In January, when my former high school principal was killed while protecting his students um, from an active shooter. One really hit way too close to home. And so, um, while statistically, I know the odds of that happening here are not high, it's a threat that we all feel, especially our students. And I want them to know that they are safe in our school buildings. And ultimately, our parents and our teachers should not worry about our children's safety while they're at school. And then lastly, I believe that we should be responsible stewards of our budget. Um, it's our children's education at stake, and we do not have the wiggle room to be reckless with any dollars that we spend. Uh, Rock Hill School District has seen a lot of change over the last few years, including some school closures and overcrowding. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm Mildred Douglas. And I'd like for you to repeat after me. I'm special. I'm special. I can't hear you. I'm special. I'm special. <laughs> Let's get together. 
I'm special. I'm special. I'm priceless. I'm priceless. I'm unique. I'm unique. I can think for myself. I can think for myself. And I can say no without feeling guilty. And I can say no without feeling guilty. So from that, you can tell that I was a former classroom teacher. <laughs> That's how I started every morning with my children to get them into the learning movement. And I've had the experience of teaching in North and South Carolina a total of 44 years. And this year will end for me 23 years on the Rock Hill School Board. Why did I come to the board? First, I am a native and a product of Rock Hill School and Rock Hill. I've had two sisters that were teachers in Rock Hill School District, as well as my husband was a teacher. And we could see the reaction and the communication of what we needed to do. The same thing here. We have to realize that we don't have one package everything. We have different packages. So we have to be able to work and motivate them according to what's in their package. <coughs> now, I'm a graduate of M. Scott High School. I'm no longer here. I'm also a graduate of Friendship Junior College. It's not here. I moved to Livingstone College in Salisbury, North Carolina, where I received my B.S. degree in elementary education. Then I returned to Winthrop and received my master's in early childhood education. Why? Children are my witness. Um, all right. Hi there, I'm Melissa Harris. And first of all, thank you all for coming out to support and hear us. Um, I think it takes the community to get involved and I find the solution, so that's one of the reasons that I'm running. Um, my background is I am a product of the Rock Hill School District, lesson number one, lesson number two, um, Castle Heights and Rock Hill High. So that might tell you my age a little bit. And also, I have four great children, and three of which are all alumni of Rock Hill High, go Bearcats. And I have one who is a freshman at Rock Hill High. So I do have skin in the game. I've been able to have a vantage point of actually being a recipient, a child throughout the school ministry, and then also a mother. Um, another hat that I wear is I am a proud citizen of the Catawba Nation. So I feel like I do bring a different perspective to the board. And I think the board is doing great. I've seen that they've really been able to navigate us during difficult times. So I'd like to be, I, it would be an honor for me to be able to lend my voice to help to continue to steer the ship the right direction for our community and our children. And I also have the advantage of being a social worker. It's in my spirit to serve others and serve community. So I feel like that's my why, is to serve the people of Rock Hill and give back to my community. One of my main talking points is, of course, safety. As a mom, every morning, you know, we turn on the news and. God forbid there's something happening. And that's the worst case scenario we want for our children and for our community. So I would like to um, continue to work to fortify our schools so we don't have to wake up and worry about what's happening with our kids. So our kids don't have to wake up and worry about what's going to happen today. So um, that's, that's my main reason why is, is safety. And then also to safeguard and to um, recruit and retain world-class teachers and staff. Our teachers do a heck of a job, and I think they need to be paid for it. You get what you pay for, so I say invest in teachers and, and staff. And so for more information, follow me on my Facebook page, and I appreciate your support. Thank you. Um, I'm Matt Hires. I'm running for Rock Hill School Board Seat 1. Uh, I am a uh, husband, my wife Ashley. Uh, we have two 19-year-old girls. Um, and we're foster parents as well. So both of our girls, they're in college. One's at USC, one's at Clemson. So I'm broke. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna be taking up a love offering at the door uh, when you leave. But um, 
I have been a volunteer in the Rock Hill Schools for over 11 years now with several programs, our Rock Hill Schools Education Foundation with Back the Pack, doing our student celebrations, uh, being a mentor in our schools. Um, by my voice, you may have heard it before on the radio, uh, calling the high school football games on Friday nights. Um, also, um, one of my favorite uh, volunteer positions in the school is as a lunch buddy, as you can tell. Um, also, I serve on the South Carolina High School League's Executive Committee, where we dole out equity and equality for all our teams and all our public schools. Uh, you can see more about that on my website, some of the accomplishments we've been able to get there. Why I'm running for school board is I think we can all agree this is a way different world than the one we grew up in. There's all kinds of different dangers out there. There's all kinds of different uh, scenarios that can happen and, and our children are not prepared for this life going forward. What I propose we do is teach job skills, beef up our ATC programs, promote that for our children that aren't going to college. I can't see that color. Um, <laughs> I just look straight into that lamp. So I get uh, 20 more seconds. But uh, to uh, collaborate with our community businesses, to uh, foster internships and apprenticeships and give our children real world skills, how to teach them how to interpersonally communicate, how to look someone in the eye, shake their hand and talk instead of walking around doing this yeah. with their hands. Mm -hmm. Also, um, we were talking about uh, promoting discipline and um, discipline and respect in the classrooms and having our teachers back. I'm Matt Hires, for C1 here at Rock Hill School District. Thank you. My name is Jennifer Hutchinson and I'm running for the at-large seat for the full four-year term. Um, I'll just tell you, my reason for running is because um, back in 2020, when those three elementary schools were closed, my family was actually caught um, in that we were zoned for uh, Finley Road, which was one of the schools that closed. Unfortunately, we were able to get to Charity Park, which is a great school. I'm on the School Improvement Council there on the PTO. But I realized that there were a lot of children that didn't necessarily have the same benefits that I did with uh, working, uh, being a working mom and having a working husband. We were able to take our kids to school every day. But I also recognize that there's so many children that cannot. There were children that had to be up at 5.30 in the morning to get to the bus stop at 6. And then I recognized that some of those children even shifted a couple of times to their elementary schools. focus is really focusing on what makes sense to Rock Hill. My platform is community, collaboration, and connection. The community part of it is making sure that we have Rock Hill-focused solutions for Rock Hill schools. Our community is unique. It's not like Clover, it's not like Fort Mill, it's not like your all great areas of York County, but this community is especially different and we need to be cognizant of what our children need. The collaboration part of it is making sure that we honor our teachers, that we work to make sure that they get pay raises, which is amazing because they deserve that, but they also want to make sure that their morale is good, that they don't fear um, losing their jobs, making sure that they get give feedback and they get it back, that they receive it back. And then the other part of that is the connection. I think as a parent, as a working parent, it's important to me that I can get adequate feedback from the school board. If I reach out to the school board, if I need a question answered from the school board, then I'll get that communication back. I think that the school board needs to meet people where they are. And I think that's important again in Rock Hill. Again, this community is so different, it's so big, it's so vast. I think we should go back to the basics. We should meet people at school district uh, auditoriums and just go throughout the community and make sure that the message is heard. So I'm Jennifer Hutchison running for the at-large seat. Please vote for me. I should have went first. My is taking in. I'm hearing all this stuff and it's kind of like, man, that's really good. That's really good. <laughs> uh, I'm Fred George. I'm a native Rock Hillian. I'm not sure that's a great word or not, but uh, um, I am the uh, son of a liar. Okay. My dad lied to get into World War II. At the age of 16 years old, he uh, he enlisted to serve in our country as uh, he fought in World War II. Uh, he had an older brother, and they went in as twins. Even though my dad was a foot taller than his brother, they they both were um, enlisted in the Navy, and they both were on the same ship together. Um, I am uh, the, the husband of a teacher. My, my better half here in the, in the school district. We uh, both uh, we raised six children that all have attended and graduated through Rock Hill schools. Three of those are still in education. Um, I have been a volunteer 
in the city of Rock Hill, my community, my town, it's important to me for a number of years. Uh, 2015, I was a recipient of the GC Ray uh, City of Rock Hill Volunteer Award. And um, the reason for I'm voting is that I think I do have a different perspective than, than someone else. Uh, my, I still have, as I mentioned, my wife is still involved in school. I have a son who is still involved in the schools. Um, I want to see a lot of a lot of echoing is exactly what everyone else said. The safety in our schools has got to be paramount, regardless. We have to support all of our children. You know, not just one particular group, but all of our children, all of our teachers. We have to support them, and then we have to be accountable. You know. Uh, not only just physical accountability, but we also have to be accountable. We have to hold our teachers uh, accountable. We have to hold our administrators accountable. I'm Fred Jordan. I'm running that large position for Rock Hill. I appreciate your support. I agree with Fred. I should have gone first. <laughs> Everybody shared the same ideas, and it just made me more nervous to be up here. But I'm Brian McAlinden. Um, I'm a father of four, 12, 9, 8, and 6. And they all go to Rock Hill schools. My wife, Mary Catherine, she's a former teacher. She's in my ear about what needs to be done. And um, she encouraged me, along with my will to serve, um, to, to put my name in the hat last November when, there, when um, there was an opening on the school board. And I went through a process with interviews, and I was appointed to the school board to fill uh, Brent Falkenberry's position. Um, I'm now running for re-election or unelection because you know we need the public to speak, we need the public to vote. So I'm here because I just got my foot wet and I really want to continue this mission. I, I opened my eyes to how important it is to have a conservative leader on the school board. Someone who values God, who values family. I, I can tell you just in the short little time that I've been there, we passed policies to protect teachers from being beat up. Like that was just put in since I've been here. And I'm, I'm scared. I, my little kids need a safer environment. Rock Hill deserves a safer environment. We need to look at everybody. We need to treat people as individuals and teach them as individuals. We need to work on these school grades. They're, they're, they're not good right now. And so I'm here to ask for your support I need your vote to continue this mission to help improve our grades, to keep our schools safe, to keep teacher, give a voice to the parents. I, I love that part about the job. And more people have called me and I'm trying to remember their names and they're like, Brian, I don't like the calendar or can you do this or can you do that? And so I'm asking for you to help me stay on the school board, vote Brian McElindon on the at-large candidate on uh, expired term. Thank you. My name is Kevin Thompson, um, and I'm running for an at-large seat for the Rock Hill School Board. Uh, I'm a native of Rock Hill, born and raised, never left, uh, left for a little bit. Um, I'm married to uh, Elisa, she's an educator, 30 years in York, South Carolina, and uh, I'm currently employed at Duke Energy, I've uh, been there for 22 years. Um, we have two kids in the school system. I have a daughter at South Point, she's in 11th grade. I have a son who graduated from South Point, he's two years now in Coastal Carolina. So, and my daughter, she's uh, she's, she's, she's ready to leave, she's ready to fly to cook too. <laughs> We're trying, I'm trying to keep her local, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to. Uh, one of my reasons for running for the school board is, is simple. It's uh, to be an advocate for the students, uh, to make sure the students have the tools that they need to succeed to be an advocate for the teachers. Um, teacher retention, I'm big on teacher retention. We, we're losing way too many teachers. We, we're losing way too many good teachers. Uh, so, you know, one of my goals is I just want to go in and, and, and see how we can keep them. What can we do to keep these teachers in the system? And third is community involvement. I believe in transparency. What goes on on the school board, the community should know about it. We have to be transparent with what we're doing, the decisions that we're making, um, trying to get the community more involved with, with a lot of the decisions that's been made on the school board. And, uh, and lastly, I think, you know, with what's going on in the world today, not, not just on the Rock Hill School Board, the 
school board's all across America. More than anything, the school board needs to work closer with the teachers, the administrators, the superintendents to try to make uh, our kids' learning environment as safe as possible. This is the time we need to work closer with the educators uh, to try to make our kids' learning environment uh, a success. Again, I'm Kevin Thompson, running for an at-large seat, Rock Hill School Board. Now we're going to move on to District 4, our last district, that's Fort Mill. And before we do, we want to mention that um, Ellen Abramo and Anthony Bodie are not here. They had conflicting events. We encourage you all to go and visit their um, Facebook pages. And if they have websites, please seek them out. We want you to get information on all of the candidates. Um, and in the meantime, we will go with our next candidate, uh, Denise Casey. I am Denise Casey, and I am running for the Fort Mill School Board at large seat. I want to bring a nurse's voice to our school board. I'm running because I believe in our children. I believe in their potential. I believe in their dreams. And I believe in, their, in our responsibility as members of this community to shape their future. We all know that education is about more than test grades and test scores and grades. We need systems that will shape the whole child, not just academically, but also emotionally, socially as well. Therefore, having a nurse on the school board will help bring attention to critical thinking skills, emotional intelligence, and building resilience in our schools. As a nurse, I see day to day the challenges that our students face with stress, and anxiety. I also see teachers and staff who care deeply about our students but are often overwhelmed by the demands that academic benchmarks are placed that are placed on them as well as dealing with the emotional behavioral and social um, instances that occur in the classroom. Therefore, as a nurse on the school board, I hope to bring to you a platform that includes prioritizing mental health. We need to make mental health a priority in our school, mental wellness a priority in our school, not just for our students, but also for teachers and staff. The second thing I would like to bring to our schools is to continue our academic excellence. In Fort Mill schools, we are known for excellence in academics, but we need to personalize our academic pursuit of excellence to, to each child. And then thirdly, as it's been said before, I would like to increase parent and community involvement. I am a member of this community that is strong, it, it feels strongly about community involvement. Thank you. And I am Denise Casey. Hey, I'm Scott Frateroli. I am running for my third term on the Fort Mill School Board. Uh, and finishing up my 27th year of service to the Fort Mill community. Uh, I'm gonna try to give you in two minutes uh, a handful of reasons of why I'm running for school board. First, I'm a parent. Uh, I have two sons. They've gone through the Fort Mill School District uh, pre-K through 12th grade. My, my younger son's finishing up this year. Um, very different children, uh, had very different uh, academic paths throughout their careers, school careers. Uh, so I understand what parents go through and some of the celebrations and challenges. Uh, second of all, I'm an educator. Uh, I served the Fort Mill School District as a teacher for four years, an assistant principal for five years, uh, and I was a principal at three different elementary schools, including opening two new elementary schools. So I understand what it's like to build school culture, to work with people, and to really uh, give that family feel that we, we talk about so much in Fort Mill. Third, I'm a learner. Uh, I've got a, a master's degree in uh, educational leadership, also a doctorate in educational leadership, and I feel like as a good school board member, you always have to be willing to learn. Learn about our community, learn about our students, learn about what the, the staff needs at all times. Uh, fourth, I'm, I'm a board member. I am an experienced board member. I've served the Fort Mill School Board for, for eight years. Uh, I've been an elder at my church. I serve on my HOA. Um, I continuously give back to the community. I've been on the, the uh, Charlotte Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation board. I've also been, uh, I am the board president of Camp Kudos, which is a type one diabetic camp for children. And finally, I'm a public education advocate. 
Um, it is literally in my DNA. My dad was an elementary school principal. My sister was a teacher. Uh, my father-in-law is a fifth grade teacher. I care about the students in Fort Mill. I care about the success of our schools. I care about supporting our staff and I care about supporting our community. So I'm Scott Fraderoli. I'd appreciate your vote on November 5th. Hi, I'm Michelle Hoffman and I am running for Fort Mill School Board as a parent, teacher, and leader. I'm a parent to two girls in the district. I have one eighth grader at Forest Creek Middle and one 10th grader at Catawba Ridge High School. I am also running as a teacher. I um, previously was in finance at E-Trade Financial before the 08 recession, where I decided to go back and get my master's in order to teach because I wanted to help students. And so I got my master's at Queens University and then started teaching in CMS. And then my husband um, moved careers and um, his job moved to Fort Mill. And so we thought, why make the reverse commute? Why not move to Fort Mill? It's a fantastic school district. So I started teaching at Dobie's Bridge Elementary and taught there. Um, and then I became a leader. I served on the School Improvement Council. I served as grade level chair. And in 2020, I was named Winthrop University's Outstanding Collaborating Mentor Teacher. So I've served in all three capacities and am excited to, uh, would love to work on the school board. Um, two of my main things that I would love to accomplish on the school board is I really want to be a champion for teachers. As a former teacher, I really feel passionately about how hard our teachers work and I would love to retain and attract teachers, especially in Fort Mill. Um, also too, I really want to focus on our academic programs. I think that we do a phenomenal job in Fort Mill and what I'd like to do is add more vocational training. I've talked to parents that want to have more language programs and also to an orchestra. Um, my daughter is passionate about music and I would love to incorporate that into our classrooms. So please, when you're thinking about voting on November 5th, vote for me, Michelle Hoffman for Fort Mill School District School Board. I'm Christy Spears uh, and I have been on the school board in Fort Mill since 2016. I've been the chair since 2017. Um, I grew up in Fort Mill. I attended elementary through high school, graduated from Fort Mill High School, Clemson University. Um, I went to work for Bank of America for about 25 years. Um, I did the corporate rat race up in Charlotte every day, back and forth when the commute was only 45 minutes instead of an hour and a half. Um, and um, after some events occurred, I decided to retire and I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with myself. Um, I happened to go to an event um, with the chamber where they were talking about the growth in Fort Mill and we were at the time building our third high school. Um, I had some time, I had some energy, I had some passion, and I had some skills that I thought I could add to the community. So um, I ran the bond referendum that gave us Catawba Ridge High School, Pleasant Knoll Middle School, and the Aquatic Center. And I got to know a lot about the board, a lot about the administration, um, and I fell in love with what I saw because I was so impressed with the leadership and all the people that I met involved with the school district. So um, when a seat was open in 2016, I ran along with Dr. Frateroli and have been on the board for the last eight years. Um, we have seen some significant challenges in these last eight years that I feel like I have contributed to helping the board through. Um, not only have we had significant growth, but many of you are familiar with we being the first ones in the state to implement impact fees, which now a lot of our York County schools have. Um, that was a labor of love to get that across the finish line and through all the legal systems. Um, and I feel like it really led the charge for a lot of other schools in the state. Um, we dealt with COVID. We dealt with um, all of the challenges that came with that. I think we've done an excellent job since we've been back of getting ourselves back to the learning loss that occurred. Um, I'm extremely proud of our academics, but I'm also proud of our arts and our athletics. We have a total package that is fantastic for families to raise their children in our community. Um, it is not uh, for the faint of heart. It is a labor of love. Um, I have loved doing most of it for eight years, and I would be honored to continue to serve for another four. I'm Christy Spears, running for the Fort Mill School Board. Now I want to invite um, Nikki, I think Nikki, that uh, she has a statement to read from Ellen Abramo. Uh, dear YC3, thank you so much for inviting me to this wonderful candidate's fair. Unfortunately, I had prior commitment that was in place for a while before I learned of your event, and I was unable to reschedule that. Please accept my apologies for not being there this evening. I have two very kind representatives. <laughs> 
um, who will host the table in my place, and they are more than happy to help you connect with me. Have a wonderful evening. Ellen Abramo, Fort Mill School Board. So we're trying to make sure that we are exponentially fair to everyone. Yes. So um, to be fair to Anthony Bodie, he was told that he wasn't going to be able to give a speech. So just know this is on the fly, but we wanted to have him represented. So this is Mallory Dittmer. She's also um, in Cape with me, and she works closely with me. It's going to just tell you a little bit about me. Hi, He's everyone. As well. I just found out I was speaking. Yes. But, um, <laughs> um, I had the pleasure of working with Anthony on his website, so I've actually spent a lot of time hearing about his life, about his work on the school board, and especially about how much time he puts into his role as a current school board member. Um, he's been obviously on the board for the last four years, and if you follow Anthony on Facebook, if you know him, you know that he is everywhere all the time. <laughs> he's at every event. He's very, very supportive of um, our students in the district, our teachers. Um, my husband is a teacher, and so Anthony visited his classroom um, earlier this year just to stop by and say hello. And he's just, he has a very personal touch in making sure that people know that the school board cares, that they're listening, that they're approachable. Um, and he really, you know, we were, we were so thrilled to learn that he was gonna run for re-election because he um, just, he just really, really cares about the students. Um, I know that's, I already said that, but um, <laughs> he writes about 100 recommendation letters every year for students to help them get into school. Um, he has very personal relationships with the students and their parents um, and just is such a pillar of the community in Fort Mill. Um, I wish I had a little more time to prepare something so I could do him justice, but please go to anthonybody.com. Um, find him on Facebook. You'll see he's got loads of testimonials from families that just their stories like it just really won my heart to see all these. I put all those stories up on his website and so I've read every <laughs> single one and it's incredible just the way he's impacted so many students. So thank you. Thank you all for coming and again um, do go out to all of the different websites for all of our candidates and we thank each and every one of you for coming.